Well, hello. Nice to see you all here on a nice, hmm, dull Sunday afternoon in the Northern Pennines. Uh, this is a, a, a treat for us all, I'm sure. Anybody that tuned in expecting to see Miss P, unlucky. You've got me instead. Right, we're here today to talk about Tyvek and using it in uh, junk journaling and any other sort of mixed media art uh, you wish to use it in. Uh, when people hear the term mixed media, they sometimes panic. Oh, I don't know what that is. But basically, it's just using more than one thing, two or more various things in an art project, whether that's watercolour, acrylic, ink, pencil, crayon, charcoal, whatever. As long as you use two or more, it's mixed media. It's as simple as that. So, what is Tyvek? Good question. It's a good place to start, isn't it? Here is a sample of some Tyvek. Uh, basically, it is a man-made, non-woven uh, material. Um, non-woven, so it's strong and tough. You can't tear it. It's strong and tough. You may see, maybe, no, you can't really pick it up. You can just about see there's some, maybe if you get the light right, there's various long fibres that are meshed together to, to form Tyvek. Uh, it has various properties and it's some of those properties that we're going to exploit today to try and get some nice effects and explain uh, how else we can use it apart from the practical side. Uh, Tyvek, you may not have come across it, but I guarantee that you probably have not not realised it. Uh, Tyvek, it's used in uh, the painter's overalls that you see, those big white suits with hoods that you use as not getting paint on you. Uh, that's Tyvek. Uh, the little wristbands that go around your wrist when you go to a party or a rave. Gene goes to a lot of those, I understand. Uh, they're made of Tyvek. Um, what other things are made of Tyvek? You may have seen people covering houses in Tyvek. Uh, it's much thicker than this, um, but it, it is all Tyvek. Now, the reason that they use these things is because it's uh, weatherproof and waterproof. If you put some water on there, a little spritzer, let's spritzer it you'll see that it all just beads up. It doesn't soak through. It prevents water. But because of the way they manufacture it, it does have very tiny microscopic holes in it that allows it to breathe. So whilst it won't let liquid water through, it will let vaporized water through, which if you're wearing one of those painted suits all day is a good thing to know, because it wouldn't be nice when you take it off if you'd been sweating it all day and it couldn't get out. You have big sloshy legs. Uh, other reasons they use it, it is good, it doesn't rot, uh, it's antibacterial so mould doesn't grow on it, um, so they wrap your house in it so it keeps the weather out but allows the house, house to breathe. So the normal use you may find for Tyvek is for strengthening uh, spines on the books that you make or any folding whether it's a flip out or whatever if you put Tyvek down uh, it won't tear it's impossible to tear it as much as you pull it it will not tear uh, it you can easily sew it it sews through a sewing machine you can hand sew it so it really is the perfect thing for that but what we're going to look at today is more of a arty side we're going to go all arty so if you're one of these people that likes nice, clean, flowery type things, probably go and make yourself a coffee. <laughs> because it's a very it and miss process, shall we say. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is to, you could, you could distress it as it were, um, but that's not quite as interesting. You can distress it first and then paint it, but what we're going to do is paint it first in various mediums uh, and then distress it and see what we turn out. Uh, so let me get some bits of Tyvek. As I say, you can purchase Tyvek. Let me get them there. Uh, there's some that I've bought in the past. 
Tyvek, similar to fibre film, five times A4 sheets, Tyvek heavyweight paper. Um, but as I say, it comes in painter's overalls on the size of houses, um, or US Postal Service envelopes, the standard envelopes. Uh, they make those out of them uh, because they're waterproof and you can't tear, which from what I've heard from some of the people, that's probably a good thing with the US Postal Service. Um, so there is ways of getting Tyvek without actually having to purchase it from a craft shop. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do, I think, is paint that with some metallic paint. So if you just bear with me a second, I'll be right back. We've got a copper, oops, a copper metallic paint. Uh, it's acrylic, it's got mica in it, so it's nice and shiny. Uh, this particular one is a brand called Fusion. They make acrylic paints for painting furniture. Just happened to have that to hand, so I should have used that. He says, if I've ever taken the top off in the last 20 years, no I'm not. It's good, bit, it's good, bit, it's good. Bit. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, nice, nice coppery colour. Can you see that? Uh, and we're just going to paint that directly onto the Tyvek. Doesn't need any any prep or anything. Uh, just a big brush. Get some of that and paint away. You don't need to be particularly precious about this um, because as you'll find out when we actually come to the distressing part it really takes care of itself so you don't need to worry about brush marks uh, you don't necessarily need to represent coverage um, because some bits were going to uh, contract on themselves and other bits will probably just disappear I hope you're all well out there. Uh, Miss P is manning the uh, chat line. Um, so I'm sort hello. Of, she says hello, and I'm sort of flying solo. Uh, I haven't even got you on my screen, so I can't even see if anybody's doing anything. Something went wrong. Oh, lordy, it's predicting the future. <laughs> Here we go. As you can see, it's just really just like painting any other uh, card, even though it's it's waterproof uh, and breathable. It does take paint incredibly well. Uh, this is, as I say, is, is an acrylic paint. I get it all over my fingers. Why not? Uh, and as you can see, that's just a very sort of rough coverage. Uh, there's bits where it's thinner than others. There's plenty of brush marks, but it really doesn't matter. So we'll just place that to one side. Uh, we can also use, put the lid back on that. Never get it off again, but I don't need to, not for now. Bear with me a second again. I'm gonna get another piece of Tyvek. Uh, probably a little big that one. We're going to cut that one down a little. Uh, obviously, you, you can't. So she thinks I'm looking a bit rough. <laughs> you don't know the half of it, Julie. Trust me. <laughs> I mean, really, we're just one in the same person. It's just Miss P without the makeup. Uh, there's another piece of tie bit there, and this time, <laughs> this time we're going to use uh, some silk paints. Very watery paints, as you're probably aware, uh, just to show that they work perfectly well with this. Uh, we've got two colours, I don't know what that one is. That one is uh, anthracite, and that one is a medium yellow. So we're going to take both lids off those. There's not much yellow left there, but there'll be enough. Ooh, anthracite's very dark, isn't it? Guess it's black, it's like coal. Yeah. 
as you can see there that's soaking in quite nicely i mean because uh tyvek is uh, sort of waterproof shall we say uh the things tend to take a little longer to dry because they're not actually soaking in they're kind of drying on the surface so they, they won't dry normally with silk paints they dry really really quickly um, but because it's on the Tyvek it's taking slightly longer but that doesn't matter uh, should I stick that straight in the yellow why not go on live dangerously Stick it in there, get some yellow. Get some yellow going on over that black. And I'm sure you're all sitting there thinking, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> What's the idiot up to now? I swear on my channel, sir. <laughs> Not when you're on camera. <laughs> I'm sure I've got it somewhere. Where is it? Where is it? Just find it. I've got, I've got the, I've got the manual here of what I am and am not allowed to say. <laughs> oh yeah, no swearing. <laughs> there we go. That's sort of a, a blacky, yellowy. You're thinking, oh, you're making a right mess of that. Well, you'd be right, I am. The beauty of Tyvek really is it's all about experimentation. Uh, let me just get rid of those. The reason I'm not sort of going overboard by telling you whose brand of paints they are, etc., etc., is because it really does not matter. Just use whatever you've got. Uh, we've got another little bit of Tyvek now. Board's getting a bit messy. Where's Mr. Timmy gone? Right, now we're going to use some of my favourite things, which are some De La Roni. I know I wasn't saying I was going to tell you what they are, but the De La Roni pearlescent inks. But any ink, any pearlescent ink will do. There's no need to get hung up about it. Uh, I've got some nice colours here. We've got that one, which is... Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, McCaw Green. Uh, that one's a Phil Martin one, and that is... You can't get those Phil Martins anymore. Can you not? No. Oh, it's Misty Blue. Apparently you can't get these anymore, but I've got it, so I'm going to use it. But, but the FW inks, the... The pearlescence, the FW ones you can get. Yeah. I think they're called System 3 now inks, but it's exactly the same thing. They've just um, rebranded, shall we say. Just shaking these up because with a pearlescent generally they've got mica in them which settles to the bottom over time uh, and we're just going to drip some on like so and then what we're going to do is get myself a palette knife and just spread some of that around It is a nice colour. I don't know whether you can see that on the camera, but it is it is pearlescent. Uh, it's shining away uh, on mine. I don't know whether you can see it on the camera. Yeah, probably. It looks wet, but it is pearlescent. So we'll get another colour. Give that a quick wipe. And we'll go from the core green. We'll turn that round so we don't end up end everything going the same way. all these things you haven't even seen what Tyvek does yet have you I'm keeping you in suspense that's what it is I don't think me don't think me little dobbers working give it a squeeze just check a bit out all I did was check a bit out yeah I'm going to no I don't think me drippy drippy drips working so what we're going to do is be brave and go for a little bit of tippage. 
You will all be brave, be brave. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, look. look there we go. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Uh, and we're going to go sweep it across that way and let them, let them blend together. Just. As I say, you don't have to necessarily go for 100% coverage um, because when we come to distress it, it's going to take care of the summer, some of the issues that we might have with bits that are bare. I'll just spread that out just to make it easier when we do come to do something. I just think that might need a third colour, I think. I always think most things when you're doing them, Threes is the way to go. So what have we got? What have we got? What excitingness have we got? Ooh, look at that one. Ooh, yeah, it should go for a little bit of bronze. Again, it's uh, calligraphy iridescent. Phil Martin again, can't get it anymore. But, you know, other inks are available. Mad shaking. And we're just going to use this as a, a slight accent, so we're just going to put one or two drops, not too much. And just use it to perhaps try and fill in some of those uh, bits that we missed before. Obviously you can do this in whatever sort of colour palettes uh, a suit in whatever you're doing at the time uh, you know there's no reason that you can't use pastely colors rosary rose type colors um, obviously if you're Tommy you may want to go black <laughs> she's our resident goth knower of all things gothy yeah which is certainly too beautiful bookmarks Yes, that's right. She did send um, Miss P two absolutely gorgeous bookmarks the other day. They're right there in your left, oh, by your left hand. Uh, apparently they're by my left hand. Uh, whereabouts? Oh, on the table. Red. Uh, yeah, on, on the, just yep. on the side of my caddy. Yep, yep. found them. Oh, there we go. There we go. There's, look at those. Aren't they absolutely oh. glorious? And that's from oh, the resident. That's oh, from the. So it just goes show. Just because you're a goth doesn't mean you can't do pretty. Uh, and they're all laminated. I don't know if you can see the shine on them. Uh, they've been made and then laminated, which means they're very easy to slip into books. You're not going to get your finger marks all over them when you're in bed late night eating your Cheetos or whatever it is you do. Uh, but they're absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much, Tommy. There we go, that's that one. You see, it looks almost like a woodland scene, that doesn't it? It'd be a very strange woodland scene, I appreciate that. More like a woodland scene on some far distant alien planet, like somewhere S Star Trek would visit. Uh, so we've done acrylic paint, we've done silk paints, we've done inks. Uh, the next one I want to show you, just to prove that it is feasible to do it on many a many a thing. Oh, I'm doing well, I'll just find another piece of Tyvek. I'm sure I've got another one somewhere. Ah, there we go. I'll just cut that down a little. You can cut smaller pieces, um, but when we actually come to distress this, uh, it tends to shrink by about 50%. So you're going to end up with half the size of something that you you started with. So you don't want to be too small to start with, otherwise it'll just become very, very small. Because if you start small, it'll be 50% of small, whatever that would be in a technical term. Tiny, I think, probably. So next we're going to use something a bit more left field, shall we say. Uh, we've got these lovely uh, gilding polishes. Uh, they're kind of wax polish. 
the bicosmic shimmer, but other ones are available, I'm sure, uh, which is kind of more of a paste. It's a beautiful colour, mind. Look at that. Look at the shine on that. Um, just because it's waxy, it's not going to stop us doing it. Uh, so you can see there, it's, it's quite sort of almost moose-like. Well, not necessarily moose as in elk, but <laughs> moose as in uh, delicious pudding. Uh, we're just going to put that on and we're just going to use a palette knife again because if you just float palette knife over it tends to give you some lovely drag marks whereas with a brush you tend to get more clearer lines and you can see that it's quite quite a, a waxy substance uh, but it does not matter Julie, Julie's saying if she wrapped herself in tiebag and sat in the sun. Uh, well, just send us the video is all I can say. If you really think that's uh, something to be doing. Uh, I mean, long, long time ago, well, several years, um, we wrapped a tree in Tyveg. Uh, we, we, we painted it in a similar manner in heathery, fell side type colours, wrapped the tree in it. Uh, and then distressed it around the tree uh, and very nice it was a bit of installation art i suppose you would that's call it that's an art degree for you yeah, that's an art degree for you that's the sort of thing you end up doing but yeah it was a bit of installation installation art we made the tree blend into the fell side with the heather and the gorse and the etc uh, the things you do eh uh, what else have we got of these nice colours? Uh, this one, which is a... Give me a clue, give me a clue. Rich red gilding polish. Rich red. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, it does look good enough to eat, but don't. But it does look good enough to eat. Don't eat the products. Don't eat the products. Though those of you who know me, I'm not adverse to eating the odd thing. I've produced my own list for next month's September daily. Many of the things we'll be featuring. Again, we're using the palette knife just because you get more random marks rather than something too predictable. Uh, because when you're doing this kind of thing, really, you just need to free yourself up don't plan ahead don't think i'm going to do this i'm going to do that line i'm going to make that mark just see what evolves that's usually the best way let say if you're one of these ones that's a bit of a, a control freak who can't let go then uh, look the other way I think we just need to fill that in a bit more, I think. That's going, which we just need again, a possibly an accent colour. What have we got this time? Oh, look at that lushness. Gold treasure. Ooh. Ooh. Goldy. Don't want too much of this, because a little bit of gold is nice. Too much gold is a bit um, garish. That's what I tell Miss P when I buy her some jewellery. <laughs> too much, you don't want too much gold, I keep telling her. She won't have it though. I got some very nice earrings a couple of weeks ago, didn't I? Uh, you did get some very nice earrings a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember what happened to them, but you know. Well, I haven't worn them. <laughs> she, she hasn't worn them, no. That's not the point though, is it? It's the thought that counts. <laughs> they weren't like those, what were they? Um... Oh, them daggers that yeah, you got. The daggers. Yeah, One time she ordered some, I, I don't know what it was that she ordered, probably some charms, I think, probably from, from AliExpress. 
and when they came, they were like four-inch stiletto knives, e- earrings, sort of dangled down about four inches in the shape of a stiletto knife. Very nice for some gangster's mall. <laughs> Don't know what this says about me. The Godfather. I am your father, Luke. <laughs> so, there we go. There's a nice kind of waxy loveliness that probably won't take much drying i would think i might give it a little bit of rub over with a little bit of uh, kitchen roll but pre-used you know i don't get a fresh one you know this is not the miss p show just wet that over a bit just to blend it in a bit more spread about take it off and now we're gonna get eventually every saying when 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 well now is the time to distress Tyvek you need heat now you can provide that heat with a hot air gun you can provide it with uh, your regular old iron doesn't get used for anything else in this house uh, or later we're going to really go to town with some proper heat manly type heat uh, but what you need to do is put that between some baking parchment um, just to stop it sticking to your your iron and whatever you're putting it on so we'll get a bit of uh, just an ordinary piece of baking parchment you can see there's already been doing some stuff on it and what you need to do, you need to bear in mind, shall we say, is that when you apply heat to it, it's going to shrink. It's going to shrink like bilio to 50%. If you use your heat gun, it'll also curl up and, and it, it becomes more difficult to use it at a later date because it's all curled up because it curls up. It shrinks in all directions, not just inwards and downwards. It, shrinks X Y and Z uh, so you can use a heat gun and if you're going to use one to stop that curling you can pin it down and we'll do that later uh, but the, the easiest way I find is to use a high iron, iron an iron even this irony thing here the irony of it all uh, the it's on the full setting no steam we're going to do this one because we've still got it here. I'm going to pop it face down because what happens is when you put the heat, it, it go, bubbles, it shrinks away from the iron. Um, so if you put it that way up, it'll bubble downwards and these bits will sort of go into the valleys. What we really want to do is bring those colours up. Um, so what we do is put it the colory side down. You can colour both sides of course, there's no reason that you can't do both, but in this instance we haven't because we don't need to. Uh, you just put the bark in paper and what you're going to do is we're going to iron it, but we don't iron it as if you're working the creases out your your best corset. What you do is you float the iron across the top uh, and you'll see what happens, hopefully put it down and you kind of float it over and you'll think nothing's happening uh, and then all of a sudden it'll start to work its magic he says it will, it will just be patient It's going to go, it's going to go, it's going to go, I tell you. It's going to go. It's starting, I can see at the edges, it's starting to do something. Come on. It's always the same on live TV, isn't it? Oh, look, did you see that? Did you see that there? Wrinkly, wrinkly. Oh yeah, now look, 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 look. Now I'll stop it there. I'll just do a bit over there. I'll just stop it there before we go too far and show you the result. Because you can always stop at any point 
Uh, it, because it cools down really quickly, so you're not going to burn yourself, but do take care. And the other thing I would say is if you have any allergies or it's always best to do it in a ventilated area, get the fan on, get the window open, whatever, because Tyvek is a sort of a plasticky material. Uh, so there is some fumes, not many, but there are some. And of course, it depends what medium, what paint, etc. you're using as well. So there we go. And then we can turn that over. And can you see how it's all started to bubble up? Getting a nice bit of texture there, particularly in that area there. And what it's doing is because it's shrinking, the, all the paint that we put on, or in this case the gilding polish, it is the, still the same volume. So as it contracts, it condenses all that pigment, all that colour, into tight little spots. So it increases, it gets more vibrant and more interesting. You can see in that bottom of there, it's all sort of condensing in the bottom of the valleys. Uh, and as you can see, it's it's gone away. The bubbles are on that side because we've ironed that side. It goes away from the iron. Uh, and of course, you, you can do it as much as you want. That, that's what our class is very lightly done. Um, we're going to keep on doing it. And we're going to, again, hover. Get it shrinking. Jean says she's not going to open the window. She's going to close it and breathe deeply. Well, I don't blame you. It's what you probably used to do in your hippie days, wasn't it, Jean? Poor old Jean. <laughs> I can imagine Jean in a VW camper, you know, camping out on the beach. Yeah, with one of those headbands made of beads. Yeah, one of them headbands yeah. with a bead and a flower in her hair. Yeah, long flowing skirt. Yeah, you can you can just picture it. You can, honestly. Right, let's see where we're up to now. Oh, yes. Look at this. Oh, yes. You see now, we're really getting some texture there now. And as you can just see, maybe, maybe if I had a bit of white paper, you see we're just starting to get some holes there. You see, yeah, there. Look, you see the hole, and there's, there's holes in these cracks here. But because it's Tyvek, which as we've already pointed out, is very tough, it ain't losing any of its strength, even with those holes. I still couldn't tear it. Uh, and obviously you could you could stop at whatever point you wanted to stop at. I think that's not far enough. Test test to destruction, I think, is the, the motto, because these are only samples. Uh, we're doing that the wrong way up, aren't we? Nobody pointed that out to me. Not that it matters. Because at the moment we're gonna do that in a minute. We're gonna we're gonna as again we're gonna hover. Because if you press down, what you do is you flatten out those bubbles that you're really trying to form. Uh, you could use the tip of the iron and just do some areas, you know, get them, chase them edges in there, chase the edge away. Do you know what? I don't think our iron's very hot. No, I think you're probably right. Our iron isn't very hot, but that doesn't matter. I mean, it is on max, but, you know, it's not the hottest thing in the world. Uh, I mean, it doesn't get a lot of use. That's probably well. The, that's that's the problem. It's not even not even running our iron. <laughs> like so many things, <laughs> not running. Right. So anyway, you can see that now we're getting a lovely, lovely. I mean, I realise it's not everybody's cup of tea you like, but it's nice. I like it. I like it a lot. And because this is Tyvek, and I've already said, you can machine sew it. You can hand sew it. You know, you, you don't have to stick with what you've got initially. You can add more to it. You can add, uh, you can sew things on it. You can glue things on it, etc., etc. We start to get some lovely holes there. It really is attractive. And, uh, uh, and as I Julie said, says it's hot, but not as hot as you, Mr. F. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we said, the iron isn't very hot. <laughs> 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 it's 
So it's kind of a bit of a backhanded compliment, but thank you anyway. It's nice of you to think of me. Uh, so what we're going to do now is because we've made all those bubbles come up and gone down from the back, we're going to turn it over and put it that way up. And what we can do, what we're going to do now is float the iron over the top, and it's just going to catch the top of those bubbles, which should give us a totally different look if the iron is going to behave itself. We're just going over and over and yeah, well, over. I'll tell you what, it's much easier. You pick the most difficult thing for it to work on. Yeah, you're probably <coughs> right. Yeah, you can see it shrinking away. Probably part of the problem. I know I'm leaning off camera here, but you know, you have to counterbalance the weight of this iron. It's no wonder I don't do any iron. It's like a workout of the gym. I know, I thought that. It's incredibly heavy iron for something. Especially when you have to just waft it. Yeah, I think it's holding the, the weight up all the time. Yeah, I think, um, I think it probably is hot. I think it's probably just me uh, being a bit tentative of, on me hover. I've got too much of a hover, hover mode. Right, so let's see what we've got when we do that side. I'm not sure we necessarily got the result. Yeah. Like, yeah. You see now we've got ridges coming the other way as well. So we've got innies and outies. Now obviously we, you could cut that up if you wanted. You could use that. Probably lends itself more to maybe the front of a book cover. Um, but we're trying a different sample. That's with the uh, gilding polish, which is probably the most awkwardest one to do. But we'll try one with some of the others th that we did. Uh, and I have some spare samples over there, should these not work either, because that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Uh, these ones are, was that, that's the inks, isn't it? Again, put it upside down, put it in. This time we're going to put it down more and go for the, oh yeah, look at that. Can you see that? Can you see that through the paper? It's not the most translucent baking parchment, but I think, oh yes, oh yes. Less of a, more crinkulation. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah. yeah. I'm liking that. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. Again, you can stop at any point and pull it. Oh, look at that. Look at that loveliness. Doesn't that look just like looking down a valley, you know, with the boulders in the foreground, a bit of blue there, perhaps looks like a little lake in the distance oh yeah you can dream away look at the back how it's bubbled away from that oh yeah that's i'm liking that that's much better everybody else is saying oh yeah it looks lovely looks like this looks like that gene says looks like an alligator, alligator. <laughs> <laughs> looks like an alligator everything looks like an alligator to gene have you noticed that She's an alligator obsessive. Yeah, and um, Lorna, and Jen, and Julie, they're all sea lizards. Sea lizards, oh, yeah. fair enough. It was me going romantically down the the valley for a picnic by the lake, and they've been in lakes full of alligators and lizards. Yeah, you see that? It's got a lovely shine. I mean, it probably doesn't show up quite as well on the camera as it looks to me. There's some lovely areas uh, there where it really sort of creates valleys and dips. Uh, and as you can see, all the pleasant, uh, it's, it's also all the mica gathers in the dips and the hollows. Uh, so what we're going to try and now do is that. And we're going to go on the top this time and see if we have any more success on the toppage. Oh, I 
생구요 So if you're into your sort of precise, nice, controlled things, this isn't really for you, but if you like a good old play and get some unexpected results, this may be the way to go. Let's have a look now. Oh yes, can you see there? Look where it's starting to make holes. You see the holes in the back? It's probably easier in the back than the front. Yeah, the, there you go, look. It's where the top of the, the things are, it started doing it away. And we could keep doing that until we actually get a very, nothing but spidery web effect left, really. Uh, but you really have to take it a long way and be brave to do that, which is why I'm going to do it. Keon wants to thank you for all the prep you've done. Well, that's very kind of you, Keong, thanking me for all the prep I've done. To be fair, this pea did do a bit. Look at it shrinking now, look. Yeah, we're really going for the for the burn here. Oh, stop, stop, no, don't stop. Oh, that's the thought of it all. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It may not be your sort of thing, but it works for me. Look at all the holes and it's still tough as old boots. I won't take that any further, but you can see that all the holes. I mean, you literally could go and, and all these, these tops of the ridges, that's all that will be left when you finally get down to finishing it off. Look at the back, even the back's gorgeous, look. And of course, the back you could now paint you know, if you didn't like that, don't worry about it. Either paint over it, add some more paint, or do the back. Lovely, lovely texture. Julie says that's a very old lizard now. <laughs> it's a holy, full of elves. My lizard's got holes in it. The lesser spotted. Look at that lovely, lovely bit there. Can you see it? Look, full of holes. Oh, and it's still tough. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, so what we're going to do next? Ooh. Uh, so anyway, you get the general gist of that anyway. That's so. What we're going to do is do a similar thing, but with the heat gun. Uh, so we'll take the glass mat away, which is now quite warm, and we'll have a go at the silk painted one. Uh, do, do I need the glass board back? No, I need to stick that on there. So, what we're going to do is put that there. And we're going to use the heat gun, aren't we? So we probably don't need that. But we do need, uh, excuse me, I'll get some pins. And we're just going to pin it in the corners. And all we're going to do is pin it in the corner because when it shrinks, as I say, it shrinks in and round and up and down. Uh, and if you want the best effects, you better sort of trap in it so that when it shrinks, it bubbles up and down and creates more holes. If you want more holes, this is the way to go. This is just the Ranger heated craft tool. It's plenty hot enough. Uh, it's not not as hot as the iron. It is quite hot that iron because I can feel it. Uh, which, if you use slightly less heat, uh, it's slightly more controllable. But we'll see what happens. Again, it's going to do exactly the same. It's going to bubble away from the heat source. So we want the bubbles on the other side. Though you could easily do it the other way if if you wanted the more colour in the dips than the tops. Depends which way you want to go. Let's 
see it takes a little bit of time to get going and if you're is in one spot can you see it starting to go there yeah there you go you see that no maybe not let me try that there maybe you'll see it that area there just start to go Um, now we're not actually going to be making anything with these today really just to show you the, the technique and the things that you can do uh, you can get the Tyvek paper in about three different weights uh, of paper and the uh, the painter suits are a Tyvek fabric which again is thinner and, and more pliable to start with so you'll get different effects with the different weights of paper and of course the heaviest one is the one that uh, you wrap houses in uh, which if you go like Mike dumpster diving you can uh, find some pieces any building site he has his fence of black Oh, he's got black. There you go. See, it's starting to go. It's not as quick as the iron because it's, it's slightly less heat. Oh, yeah, look, look, look. You see where it's curling over? That, that would happen all the way around if we hadn't pinned it. It's still trying to pin it. Look, oh, he's coming back at me. Oh, yeah, look. Once it starts to go, it starts to go. You sort of get to a tipping point. And then if you're not careful, you can make it disappear very rapidly. Let's see, because because we're applying less heat we've got slightly more control that when it does start to go you can uh, obviously keep it on there or you can back off a little move it slightly uh, and, and you have slightly more control but but not ultimate control of what's happening We'll stop there and uh, have a look, see what we're doing. Boop, boop, pin, pin. Pin, 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 pin. Uh, and there we go, can you see that? Now, what does that remind you of? Let me guess, a lizard. <gasps> a lizard nest. A lizard baby. I mean, dinosaur maybe? Crocodile? But because we've used that that heat in a more controlled manner, you can really see that the, that's 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 bubbled up much more than, than having the weight of the iron. Even if you're hovering over it, uh, it does tend to flatten it down. With that heat gun, you really get many more bubbles. That one might be a good one to take the top off. Do you think? Some of these nice ones. I'm confused. She say no use some of these nice ones. You know why? Because the couple that she did earlier. <laughs> She's like that, you know. Drama queen. <laughs> it's not true at all. Yeah. So anyway, there we go. Look, you can really see. I mean, of course, that's that's in green Godzilla, and. Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Look. The Hulk. The Hulk. The Hulk, ew. it's a bit sort of lumpy, isn't he? A bit warty. <gasps> a warty Hulk. It looks horrible. It does look horrible. Now you put that thought into people's head. Uh, but you can see in them dot bits there, that's exactly all the same colour, but because it's shrunk, it's condensed all that pigment, all that mica, all that pearlescent, really sort of. Uh, and of course, what you can do, of course, is uh, you can go in, you get a brush. Let me get a brush, let me get a bit of uh, metallic gold, why not? And there's, there's nothing to say that once you've done something like this, you can't just carry on going. Uh, let me get that and get a bit of... Tissue. Spritz me a little bit of tissue, give it a bit of wetness, uh, and then you can get a little bit of this paint and sort of work it into the hollows. Uh, 
and get your damp tissue and, and wipe it off. And depending on which you want to wipe off, you know, you can wipe more or less. You see that? It's not to work colour into the crevices and the cracks. Again, you can wipe more off. I'm trying to wipe more off. I've got very little bit of. Ah, there we go. Look, there we go. See that? Is that coming across on the camera? You all the nice little gold tones in all the dips and valleys. And of course you could do the same thing by skimming across the top and painting the tops. You could turn that into a very nice dry stone wall. Whatever you want to do. It's one of these things that the, there is no... The only perfect place to stop is before you do your last thing <laughs> when you realize that you've gone too far so stop before you're going to do your last thing that would be my advice if only we knew when that was eh so let's get on then and have a look at some of uh, some of the other things that we did uh, here's some other little samples that uh, we made earlier. There we go. That's. Uh, I think that one is probably uh, the inks. Looks like the inks to me. Uh, we took that a bit further, distressed it more, and you can really see that the the mica of the pearlescence is gathered into the bottom of those. Uh, we've got one here that we distressed. As you see the little beads. Those little beads in there. I'll get. I'll show you those in a second. Uh, where's, there's the one there. That's also uh, got some beads. I don't know whether they're coming up on camera. Uh, but you see that one again. That's uh, that, that purple is a bit too purpley. Um, but we can we can go over that with something else. We can force some of that purple into the bottom of the cracks. Uh, there's another one that did to almost destruction. Uh, there's the one that I took I did took a photo of for the start of the program. Uh, again that is uh, silk paints uh, and uh, black uh, fabric paint. Uh, and that really distressed that back that you can almost see through it. But yet again, it's still tough as anything. Uh, and here's one I made, I painted in uh, brushed steel uh, and then sprayed some of the spider web type spray on Krylon. it. Krylon, that's it. Krylon uh, web spray. Uh, which has got a very, very metallic y metallic -y sheen. Uh, Bernice says, Can we see the acrylic paint one, please? Oh, yeah, no, I'll get back to it. Uh, there they're going to, you see, there's lots of little beads in the bottom there. We've attached those beads. Let me show you what those are. I'm not sure whether you can get these anymore, but they were called fashion beads and they were by Deco Art. Uh, and basically there are thousands upon thousands of beads already within a glue. Um, they tend to settle out so you may not see them. Do you see all those? Just tens of thousands of little beads. You can get them with bugle beads and different colours and mixed beads. Um, but you put them on, the glue dries perfectly clear and you end up with a sort of Lots of little beads. Can you see in there? Lots of little beads. So any of these sort of things that you have to hand, 
any of the things that are in your craft store you can use. Uh, and there's a, a very that's, that's Kermit the Frog that one we all know that's Kermit <laughs> and again that's sort of the first stage really you get it to a lovely you've got some very sort of wispy bits there you get to that stage and, and then when you that's when you start adding your extra layers and your textures take the, and take the holes out of that take the holes out yeah, the, the Kermit. The tops of the things. Yeah. Yes, I'll do that for Miss P. She wants to. She wants Kermit ironing. So we shall do that, and then we'll get back to the acrylic one, which I think was uh, the copper, wasn't it? That was the acrylic one. We'll get back to that in a second. What are we doing for a time? Have we entertained them enough yet? Oh, not far off the hour. That's good. Uh, we're going to put that in and we're going to put it that way in because we're going to iron across the top of the the bits and see what we can get rid of. The iron's still, ooh, well hot. Electricity bill today will be high. worried about squashing it too much but then if you don't put it close enough you don't get the effect you're after so we're gonna hover that over and <laughs> keep going until Mike says Jen's starting to apply the heat to the black tie bag he has the extinguisher ready <laughs> I don't blame you Mike get the extinguisher get 911 on speed dial I would say that the first signs of noticing that there's any fumes around is uh, is uh, Jen going do lally, but you wouldn't know, would you? So, sorry, Jen. Ooh. You see now, look. Oh, look. We've turned Kermit into some glorious green landscape. I did say that if you didn't like mixed media and grungy things, <laughs> now was the time to turn away. Uh, I think that is that's so nice. I mean, you've got to bear in mind that this is going to go on something, so you, you're going to see things through these holes. Uh, and you can cut bits out. And you can cut bits out. I mean, that, that little bit there, that, that might lend itself to something. Uh, then... But of course, what we've been doing really is, do, is doing big sheets here. Um, they would be perfect for journal covers. But if you wanted a small bit, you, you could cut them out of these. But you, you can also shape the Tyvek before you start, which gives you different effects again. So maybe we'll do a little bit of that. Uh, we could do that perhaps with the... Uh, that one, we'll cut that in half. And then we'll do some... We'll distress it first to see what it looks like. Again, that's an, an, a, an acrylic paint. Uh, it's metallic. It's got mica in. Uh, it's obviously copper coloured. Um, so obviously a bit of verdigris type colour. Uh, we did a, did a sample of it earlier. Can you see there? Look at that. That's absolutely... Uh, Miss P did this one. It's got uh, copper... Uh, I don't know what it is ink maybe uh, with some turquoise underneath and it looks like it looks like a shot yeah. shot from space of some sort of turquoise lagoon in in the middle of a desert if, doesn't if it? If you don't mess that up it's going in my little journal. Uh, well she says if I don't mess it up but well, I'm not going to mess that up because I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> I'm not that brave. No I'm not that brave you put me off now. <laughs> So anyway, we'll do that. We'll do that copper just to see what it does. Uh, I think it'll be exactly the same. It'll be sort of some metallic if you're doing an industrial journal, um, steampunk maybe, something like that. Oh, you're getting 
Yeah. I'm I'm going Ooh look at that. Oh yeah, come on. Oh yeah. That 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 that, that. Ooh, yeah. Look at that. Come on people. Oh that's fabulous. I mean, I'm even smoking. I'm not even really smoking. There you go. See, when you're brave <laughs> and you get enough heat, that's what you get almost instantly. Is that not just? That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. I'm not going to touch that now. That that to me. Do the do the green and copper one that you said you weren't going to touch. Just do it. Just do it, she says. This is me doing a piece show. of. Miss P's artwork. She won't shout. She never shouts. She's not a shouty person. You get the look. Of course, we've all seen the look. We've all seen the look. We all know the look. Luckily, I've, I've had, I've been, had my vaccination shots against Miss P's look. Here we go. <laughs> We're in. We're ready. Big boy pants. Here we go. Look, you see it chasing it. Go chasing it. Chasing it. Chasing it. Chasing it. Chasing it. Chasing it. Chase it. Needs a bit more around that bottom. Just need to do that bottom bit of everything. It's got it's got holes. You can see the you can usually see the bottom from here, you see the light shining through. Look at the all the pebbleness going on there. That's what happens when you're brave, you see. I'm just going to oh, another way up. I'm just going to do that bit because you can see that bit hasn't been quite done as much as that. So I'm just going to pop it back in. That's the beauty of it. And we're just going to do that bit there. We're just going to do that and come in and hope for the best and don't wreck it now at this point. Come on, you know you want to. Jen's got a buzz from the fumes. Has she? It's not the, not the gin and orange, no? <laughs> Take deep breaths, Jen, you'll be fine. Actually, it's quite happy. <laughs> there we go. How's that? Look at that. Yeah, well done. Is that not just... Put that in my journal. It'll look lovely. Miss P wants to put that in her journal. And you want me to put it in now? Mm. Just, 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 just a... open the journal and put it in. They'll see how it'll fit. You see the... See the similarity? Yeah, perfect. Look at that. Is that not matching that journal nicely with the copper and there's the turquoise? There's a blank turquoise. page if you keep going. There's a blank page apparently if I keep going. Oh look there's one there, look, look at that. Next bit. Is that not just really nice? I think that's nice. The yeah, other thing is good, yeah. of course, I mean it, at the moment it's quite 3D. If you didn't want it quite 3D, uh, you, you could bray it. What I've done in the past is uh, put it between the two plates of the, the big shot. As if you're going to cut a die, put that between the plates and use it as a mangle and it really will flatten it off uh, and still look as gorgeous there we go so that's it that's the, that's the colors that it's intended for I think that's very industrially grungy loveliness so I'm going to put that one up there with that out the way so I don't mess with that one anymore uh, now we've got the other half. So what we're going to do here is, uh, at the moment we've just been doing sheets of it, really just to see what happens. Um, but you can start to think about perhaps doing some shapes. There's a triangle. Let's uh, cut the worst circle in the world, but it really doesn't matter. There's a circle. Let's go for something a bit more abstracty. There we go. 
So you don't have to just do it in the flat sheets. You can sort of, you can create, say, a circle out of that. But it's very unlikely you would find the grooves in the right place that you could make a circular type thing. Uh, so if you cut a circle or a triangle or some fancy shape, you can pop those on there. And we can see, you know, if you just wanted a bit of embellishment for a, a page or something, we could pop, ooh, let's just make them overlap. And there we go. And then we're gonna just go with that one. There we go. I'm gonna go over that one and the circle. And then we got ooh, got a nice little cabochon there, look. Looks a bit like a scarab beetle that one, doesn't it? Oh that's really nice. Uh, there's the the wiggly little triangle. Uh if you were doing I don't know, let's say a sundial and you wanted a number of those or a flower you know you could do any number of uh, triangles petal shapes leaf shapes uh, and there's that uh, fancy fancy shape oh that looks a bit like a little fish it does look like a fish can you see his little head look it looks like a curled up fish doesn't it like a like a koi carp Where's me? Where's, where's, where's blue? Where's blue? I need sea. I need sea water. Let me have a look. Let me put it against a bit of metallic. See whether that. See there. Look. Does that not look like a koi carp? Oh, that's it is. Or a catfish sitting on the bottom of the pond. See which is that? It looks like a scorpion tail. I can see that too. I can see that too. But it's head. Look. It's look. It's got head. It's got a fish head. Uh, that bit there, of course, that also looks quite nice on there, but you could add it with any of the other uh, pieces that we've shown you. Uh, I'm not going to show up too well on that one. No, a nice contrasting one, maybe that really dark one that I did. That would perhaps make that pop a bit more. There we go. The circle, perhaps incorporate nice, that. Sure. It's much better to cut them out first, isn't it? Yeah, it's much better to, to cut... If you want a, a specific sort of kind of shape, then, then cut it out first before you, you, you stress it. Because I say, trying to cut those out of uh, something that's, say, like that, or this, or any of the really bubbly ones, say that, which is the same colour, it would be very hard to sort of identify that shape uh, that didn't cut through one of the the tops of the mountains or the valleys um, so I think the the secret is to cut the whatever shape it is you want first uh, obviously we've still got some other bits we could cut other shapes uh, think of another shape quick and with no squares no good is it let's uh, do something that's perhaps a little bit meandering that's going to remind somebody of some creature or other. Does it seem creature obsessed? Yeah, snake. Yeah, it does look a bit snakeish, doesn't it? I suppose. But as I say today really is about just experimenting. You don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen to that. Shrinking. That tail needs a bit. If it is a tail, of course. I mean, I'm not saying that it is a tail. There we go. Let's see what we've got this time. There we go. Let's see. Aaron says seahorse. Seahorse? Yeah, I could see a seahorse. I mean, you could. It looks a bit like a man sitting down. It does look a bit. It looks very sort of um, Anthony Gormley. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Anthony Gormley, yeah. but he very much does figures um, in bronze and wire work, um, outdoor sculptures on tops of buildings, on the seafront, etc. 
Um, but it does, does look very, or, or even Mondrian, maybe. I saw some of that. Or uh, was it Mogdigliani? Is that his, his name? Yeah, Mogdigliani. Mogdigliani. That's a funny word, isn't it? Yeah. But he did very sort of that kind of figure. Um, but yeah, that's almost good enough. You could stick that on a little. It's excellent. You could stick okay. that on a little stand, and it looks very. See, you thought it was going to be a snake, and it's actually a person. There you go. Stick it on a little stand. I'll rove them. Look very nice. That was quite successful. That was unexpected. How much delight that's given me. I can't tell you how much delight that has given me. That's all. Anyway, there's various shapes. That one. There you go. Right, now the last one is probably not for the faint-hearted. Uh, I've got other pieces that I can do. I've got I've got uh, a stained one there with the silk paints, pure yellow. I could just rest that up and force ink into the bottom. I did one that is in, in bronze. It's the same type of paint as the copper, um, but a bronze colour. They look quite nice together, wouldn't they? That'd look quite nice if you put those on there. You could make a little scene. Where's that going to go? That way, maybe. And the circle in the in the sun. There we go. Look how, look, look how good that looks. Or is it just me? I think that looks quite nice. Coppery goodness. Bronzy goodness. Yes, so if you bear with me just a second, I'll get my glass board back. Put those away for now. And then what I'm going to do is get some, bear with me, get me masking tape. Oh, I keep trying to burn my arm, arm on that iron. I managed not to catch it yet, but I'm, <laughs> I wouldn't hold my breath. And I need something from over here and save that for a second. We're going to do the yellow one. Why not? Let's do the yellow one. Or shall we do the bronze one? Oh, yellow, do yellow, it's sitting there staring at me. And what we're going to do this time is I'm going to tape it down onto the glass board. And again, I'm taping it down because I don't want it pulling inwards as, as I eat it up. Uh, because on this one, I'm going to try and not get quite, quite so many bubbles. And a bit more spidery, webby type effect. Uh, and as soon as I've taped it down, up we can Judy see. Judy Hoff says this is a really fabulous presentation. That's very kind of you. It's very kind of you. I, I know I'm very. Um, uh, I don't know what the word is. And Keong says it really is, Judy. That's very nice of you, Keong and Judy. That's very kind of you to say. As you know, I'm usually the other side of the camera. Because uh, it's easier. <laughs> I find it much easier agrees. the other side. That's so does Jean. Oh, you're all just so nice. That's the problem, you see. You're all so nice. I don't know where to believe it. And Sid says, you are the best, Mr F. I am the best. I'm the best one here at this moment, at sitting at this desk. That's all I can say. It's true. Right, so what we're going to do this time is we're going to try and avoid the bubbleness. And we're going to perhaps go more for a holy. Perhaps something like this. Like the metallic one that I did there with the brush steel. Uh, the Krylon spray web. Uh, and we're going to go for more holes, less bumps. Now, the way I'm going to do that is I'm not going to use the iron. I'm not going to use the heat gun. We're going to go a Dremel on it. Ooh, we've got the flamethrower out. I've been saving this till the end just in case I burn down the house. But yet, yet, this is a gas powered uh, soldering iron type device uh, or, you know, do your creme brulee, whatever you want to do. 
let's turn that down a bit. Ooh, ooh, I got him started. Oh, give me the flame. Oh, lots of flame. It, and it, you can use it for soldering. It's an outdoor soldering iron. It's for doing soldering on the go, as it were. But you get this little nozzle that turns it into a flamethrower. Boys and their toys. Yeah. Now, of course, this heat is, is extreme. So anything that's going to happen is going to happen quick. It's not like the uh, the Timolt heat gun or any other heat gun will probably work. It'll probably be hot enough. Or the iron. This is going to happen ooh, really quick. And you notice I've got the colour side up. It doesn't really matter. But in this instance, that's the way I've gone. So I'm going to turn it on. Get a bit of the flame going. Come on. It's not going to work for me now. Come on. That's it. Hear the flame, hear the roar. Here we go. Ooh, look. Oh, yeah. Look, look at the holes already. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can see smoke. I can see flames. I can see everything. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this way, but you know, if you've got the thick stuff like uh, Jen, Mike, maybe this is the way to go. But you can see you're getting, you're getting much less bubble in, but much more uh, holy in this. So she didn't need those eyebrows anyway. <laughs> <coughs> I guess eyebrows are probably the least of your worries there. I'm going to put that over there. Ooh, it's nice and warm. And there we go, we've got much less bubbly. But much more holy, yay! We like holy. You could take the iron to that now, couldn't you? You could take the iron to that, yeah. I could bubble that up. There's, there's no, there's, there is no point at which you have to stop. If you keep on going and 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 going, and going, and going, and going, and going what will happen is it will just disappear entirely. <laughs> You'll be left with no Tyvek at all. Uh, I'm not sure I mentioned earlier or not, but Tyvek is 100% recyclable, uh, so, but not after we've been playing with it. Uh, yeah, we could we could certainly bring the uh, parchment paper back, pop it in there, and go at it another way. Now we know that naked flame works. Yeah. Violet says, oh, oh, are we both high on fumes now? <laughs> high on fumes, yeah. Let me get rid of the glass board because I don't think it's helping. It's perhaps conducting too much heat away. Oh, yes. I'm not going to stop until it does something. Oh yeah, look at that! Come on, isn't this just? Oh, that's brilliant! Isn't this just so much fun? And what we can do with that, of course, is we can put it there. We can get rid of that. We can bring this board back. We can move the iron over there. The scars will heal. Now what we can do is. Uh, Think about putting some colour on that, I believe, is probably the way forward. What do you think? What we've got here? What's this? Yeah. Pearlescent violet. Ooh. That's a brave choice, Mr. Yeah, because violet's saying that we're high on fumes. Yeah. Pearlescent violet. That's what she is. Rupert yeah, Gibbon Janice and Spidey. Yeah, Janice has to remind you you have 42 people watching. 42? Thank you. Actually, 43 now. 43, oh my lord. It must be very quiet in some parts of the world, is all I can say. 44. 44? <laughs> They're coming on board. What's wrong with people? Go away. <laughs> There's something more interesting on the other channel, no, I'm sure. Say that. <laughs> Let me.
me find a little scrubby brush. Let's try and get some of this violet into them cracks. I think I need a bit of... Uh, which she hide the... Ah, there's the roll. Get another bit of roll. Dampen it up so we can take off any excess uh, that we want to take off because we really just want it to be probably into the into the bottoms into the bottoms you say no I didn't bottoms bottoms he says into the bottom of the valley we'll call it valleys and mountains I think that's probably the way for that's safest for me to refer to them in that manner uh, right what we're going to do is that brush yeah, it might be big. Might be a bit big. Let's see what happens. What's the what's what's the worst can happen? Where should we attack first? Do you think, people? Should we go for the little bits, or should we take a big area, or should we shut up and go away, or what should we do? That, that, to, to your right. To your right. To your right. To be right. Right. To be right. Yeah. Right. Down a touch. <laughs> down a touch. <laughs> That's <laughs> down. <laughs> you mean backwards? <laughs> down here. Yeah. I'm in the bottom yeah, right hand yeah, corner. Yeah, yeah. Not that bit, the bit above it. This thing the to bit the, above it. The bit above it, she is. Yes. She's having a fit. Yeah, she says. Yes, she shouts from the distance. Yeah. Let's put some of that in there. Go on. Let's get Going in there. Going out the door to get some fresh air. <laughs> Let's get it in there. Let's get it off. Probably. Too much purple. Too much purple, too big a brush. What we need to do is be a bit more finessey, I think. Doesn't matter though, we can we can we can live with it. Let's spray it. See what happens. See if we can wash some of it off. Knock it back a bit. That's the beauty of experimenting, which is all Try this is. That's not so bad. We can always go back in with some more yellow. Maybe that's what right. maybe that's what we should do. Let me get a little brush. Let me find a little brush out of Miss P's big pot of brushes. And then we might have a bit more control over where we put it. Because you know, when you've got big, big ham fisty andies, these things happen. Whereas here we can probably paint a bit more into the into the bottoms. And then we haven't got so much to knock off. The other thing, of course, you can do is with the ones like this, because we've got so many holes, there's nothing, of course, to stop you wrapping stuff through, going through that hole and up that one and back through that one and, and that, either wool or wire or embroidery floss. There's really nothing to stop you doing whatever you want to do. And that's what this is about, really, is to encourage you to, to just have a go. Just have a go. What can go wrong? very little actually when you think about it well I mean of course you could burn the house down of course you could lose a finger but that aside what could go wrong yeah, see a bit more subtle in that top not quite so much in your face purpley it's a very pearlescent one it's full of mica uh, which is why it's quite shiny if you put too much in it really stands out I think that's not too bad, it's coming along. Use the proper end of the brush, would help. I think that's probably... 47 now. 47, where they're all coming from? Is it kicking out time at the pub or something? They really... Very nice of you to come along, by the way. I'm not having a go at you. Yeah, Kerry says this video is definitely a case of fortune favours the brave. Absolutely. You, you've got to go for these things. If you don't go for these things, well, you know. And we've got my... Ooh, look at that lovely bronze. It's almost too nice. But, you know, it's coming. It's time has come. 
So. Oh, you're going to do the bronze. I'm going to do the bronze. I'm just wondering whether to what to, what to do with it. Do I cut shapes? Do we want cut yeah. shapes? We'd like some iron shapes. It, iron it. Iron it. Iron it. Miss P wants it ironed. So that's what we're going to do. And then iron it the other way to get holes. Yes. Here we go. So is this your last bit, Mr. Uh, I've got a couple more pieces, unless, you know, people are probably fed up of seeing me do it now. Surely you are, people. I'd be fed up of watching me. I'm fed up of me and I live with me. I'm not fed up of you, Mr. F. I love you. <laughs> I love you too, Miss P. It's very nice of you to say so. I mean, you don't have to say so, because I know so. Fed up either. Oh, that's good. Neither Carrie or Violet. Good. That's good. Jen thinks was really high on you. <laughs> well, Jen's having a good day anyway. Here we go back to the iron. Just gonna leave that there and then we're gonna wait till it starts to go and then we're gonna chase it across. Yeah, crazy it across. See how much quicker that's going now, you're brave. <laughs> yeah, I know. Amazing it. What you can do if you're brave. Brave or foolish. Oh it's gonna be lovely. Oh look at that. Look at all that bit there. Can you see? I don't know whether it's coming across the camera. That is full of mica. That little spot there. So much what mica. What do you think of that, Tommy? I don't know. Tommy's loving it. Is she loving it? Oh, that's good. Yeah, I like wet silk. Too. Sorry? Kiyom says it looks like wet silk. Wet silk? Yeah, it probably does, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's nice, isn't it? It looks like, like a, a lava flow, is what it looks like to me. Judy says it looks like a weird looking pot bellied fish. A weird pot bellied fish. I think that probably says more about Judy <laughs> than it does pot bellied fish. Let's, uh, right, what do you, I don't know if I need any more on that, I suppose we could. Let's just do a bit more in that area there. It's kind of a bit too regular for us. If in doubt, do it some more. Jean's rolling around the floor laughing. Is she, what's she laughing at now? Oh, I give up. <laughs> I just think that really has got That's so really much, really so nice. much potential. That really is a, a very nice bronzy oh, colour. Such a lovely journal cover, that. Yeah. I'm going to try and take the tops off them bubbles, I think. Because why not? What have we got to lose? There's nothing to lose, is there? I mean, you're still there after all this time, so I'm not going to lose you at this point. I know all of you are waiting to lay iron across the top of your finger or something. And it's entirely possible that that may happen. So lots of shrinkage, let's have a look. Ooh, there we look. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> look at that now. <laughs> Is that not the most glorious oh, looking bit of bronze metallic, you know, out the bottom of a furnace? Sharon wants to know if it's very fragile. Fragile? No. It's not. Even them bits there, 
I can pull and I'm literally I'm pulling there and it's not coming apart it is not fragile at all look at that bit there where it's oh, cool oh I could see that on the cover of one of Tommy's journals yeah look there it's cool drown there look oh yeah I could see that I could see that in, in, in Tommy's definitely look at all that mica that's accumulated in the bottom of there and the holes that are within it look you can see the holes look like it's packed of holes oh it's so good it's so good isn't this much more fun than sticking it in the spine of a book who knew it could be so much fun yeah that's my favorite piece today i think and that's because i was brave yeah it's lovely yeah it's lovely. so what have we got left i don't know i don't know what else I can do really. So we've got some nice, oh look at that, blue and yellow, blue and yellow and that one's just sort of, hmm. Looks like the beach. Looks like the beach. It's true, it does look like the beach. If you did it, it might look more like the beach. If I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Miss P just likes it, seeing it happen, that's the thing. And I don't blame her. And look, look, you know, some of these bits we did earlier, look, coming back in again, look. There's the man, look, there's the man, look, he's going to sit on that rock, look, he's going to sit there. Got fish swimming round by his feet, look at the beach. And there is some weird sand dune. <laughs> but of course we don't have to be that way around, we could be that way, you see, if you'd put it that way around. It does look a little bit like a sort of sand dune, doesn't it? See, it's not entirely madness, this, you know. There he is, he's sitting on a, a pile of <laughs> this pile of sand. It's made of sand. The fish in the water. I mean, that would definitely work on that other one when we've got some water. You have to... Fusion Designs said what we were trying this morning. Have you tried putting a die-cut shape on top like a spider web, then ironing it? We sort of had a go at that, didn't we? Sort of. Yeah, you, you can you can uh, die cut uh, Tyvek, certainly. Um, no, she means putting a shape on top of it as a resist to the ironing. Oh, yeah, yes, you can. You can definitely put things on. Um, we put uh, little glass jars. If you put that on top of spots and then use the heat gun, it'll leave the, the sort of voids where the, the glass is because it won't shrink because the, the glass sort of diffuses the heat um, so you can sort of have it all distressed and have a, a relatively neatish circle it won't be entirely neat obviously but a little neat circle where the glass thing was on top you can use anything that would soak up the heat uh, to make voids in, in the shrinking See, fish, water, rock, man by the thing, sand dune. There you go, look. There we are, a bit of abstract art on the way to melting another bit of Tyvek. You just have to let your imagination run wild. So what do we say about this? Miss B wants this turned into some sort of beach. Put it that way. If we have the bubbles going away. It's quite a big bit. Need a bit of, might need another bit of uh, parchment paper. I think I've got a slightly bigger one there. So you can see the size of that. We're aiming for. 50% ish shrinkage uh, so it should go down from that to about that kind of size hopefully and we'll see where we're at be brave I tell you yeah. oh yeah oh look at that it's left bits behind that's even better Why has it done that? I don't know. It's great because I left it on too long is why it's done it, but that's even better. Look, look, oh yeah, look, look. 
Oh, it's so gentle. All these bits are together still. But look at that. The entrance to the fairy grotto. But then all these bits that we've got here. Ooh. All these little bits look made little bits that we could stick on somewhere. You see that? Mm. There ish. That, even that little bit's not gonna go to waste. It is like the mouth of a fairy cave. It is like the mouth of a fairy cave. If we were to bring back our seaside Or bit. mermaid. Mermaid under the sea. Mermaid under the sea, even better. And Oh, look at all them lovely flaky bits, look. Can you see them? Let me get a bit of paper so you can see them better. Better, better, better. See all them bits? They're not to be wasted, are they? You could certainly glue them on for an interesting bit of texture somewhere. Couldn't you? You can. Not to be wasted. Judy Hoff sees a man dangling from a T-Rex mouth, <laughs> which I see perfectly. Oh, I can see. Look, yeah. There's the body of the T-Rex. There's its head. Looks like more like some big chicken. And there's the, the man dangling from the That's mouth of the T-Rex. Well, it's oh, a bit... Oh, I've seen it, that. I can't unsee it. it. It's a big chicken. You see big chicken? Burp, 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 burp. Chicken. And then it's got like a frog. Can you see? It looks like a little frog. It's got Kermit in its mouth. It's a chicken eating a frog, standing on a log. <laughs> That's what it is, isn't it? It's chicken. You can't, you cannot unsee that chicken now, can you? There's its wing. Look. There's its scrawny neck. There's its head with its beak. And there's a little frog. It's a chicken eating a frog. That one quickly. Oh, that quickly went from uh, fairy grotto to mermaid's cave to a T-Rex to a chicken eating a frog, didn't it? It's like these ink blot tests, you know, maybe this is some psychological experiment that we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've already been there. We've already been there. Trying to work out the psyche of our audience. Keon says it looks like an elephant rolling a guy over a cliff. <laughs> See, look, water. Put it in the water. Now it's an underwater feature where the mermaids live. They go into there to get shade. Those two little tiny bits that you had, they could be fish. That's true, eh? that's true. Look, look, there's a fish, look. There's a fish, look, swimming in the cave. Yeah, it could be a buzzard charm. There's another little fish, look, swimming in the cave. Look, swimming outside the cave. There we go, look. Swimmy fish, swimmy fish, shift fish, fish, mermaid. Don't know what that chicken's doing under the sea. It's an aquatic chicken. <gasps> but yeah, I mean, obviously, if that's what you see, <laughs> then perhaps have words with your therapist and not me. <laughs> but that, that went really well, didn't it? I mean, even that look, it's hanging on by the tiniest little bit and it's not going anywhere. That frog's not escaping. Look. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, I think we're probably uh, about all wrapped up, aren't we, on Tyvek? I believe we probably are. I might cut some nice shapes out of that, maybe. Do that bit. I might do this bit. I might do some shapes, maybe. So do some shapes. Yeah. Yeah. I made it to look like the beach, but carry on. You made it to look like the beach. Well, how am I meant to do the beach? You mean you distress it like the beach? Just normal. Yeah. What I might do. What I might do is first of all try and distress the bottom half and leave the which is i suppose depending which way you're looking at it, it's either the beach and that's the sky or that's the sea and that's the beach or you're walking along the beach and that's the sea and that's the beach depending which way of way you want to look at it it could be either of those two things so many 
decisions. So many decisions. But what we're going to try and do is distress. Uh, Jane says it looks like a straw field with the sky. A straw field with the sky, indeed it will, but it won't soon. It'll look like some weird... <laughs> whatever comes out of people's imagination that still... Turn it, Turn it upside down. Please. Turn it upside down. She's right, you know, you've got to turn it upside down. You don't have to, but it, it, it works better that way. I'm just going to do the sandy bit first. That's what we're going to do and see what happens. Or the wheat field. Or the wheat field. Depending on whom, whom is imagination we're coming from. Now, are we Sandy Beach or a yeah, wheat field? That's, that's nice. Sandy Beach or wheat field? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, just as an experiment, I might do that that way up. Just because I can. I see no reason that I can't. There's no law against it. it may all go horribly wrong. Here we go. Uh, somebody asked if you can paint both sides. Yes, you definitely can. Oh yeah, no, you can definitely paint both sides of the uh, of the Tyvek. I've just chosen to do the one, but yes, um, because if you do, then some of the parts. Let me tease that back out a little bit. There we go. Uh, some of the bits, obviously, where it, where it opens up, or if you take the top off, it may curl back on itself and reveal the underneath um, it doesn't it done too many of our pieces but it can happen but you, you can paint the back I mean if you don't like what you see obviously you can paint on that you can sew on it you can uh, dye it you can do anything you like on that side to try and recover it or you could just turn it over and start fresh on the back uh, you can paint the back before you do it you can paint one color that way and one color that way um, you saw Miss P the other day use some crackle glaze. Uh, you could put crackle glaze on first, um, then dab on, get all your, your crackle, and then do this, uh, and it will retain some of that crackle as well as the uh, the heat, heat distress. And when you've got large areas like that, we haven't touched that at all, really, that part there. Uh, you, you'll still get the crackle glaze on that and on the top of ridges. Um, so that, that can work as well. Uh, I think that's quite, you know, that looks quite waterfront, doesn't it? If you read the sand, sand, water. Yeah, maybe, if you use the imagination enough. You can see how that part looks different. Uh, that's the side that we applied the heat to the back so it bubbled away from us. This side we applied the heat on the top uh, so it bubbled the other way. Um, and you can see that that side there, the bubbles are coming away from the colour and on this side the bubbles are coming towards the colour. So it gives a totally different effect. Uh, but in combination, I think it works quite well. I really think it does. Uh, is that about it for now? I don't know what it would... I think I've run out of bits of Tyvek to mess around with. We've distressed just about everything we can think of. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that's a bit we did earlier. Did I show you that one? That's got a nice look to it, hasn't it? That's not dissimilar to the other one that I did there, which is... Either of those would go into that journal that Miss P's doing very well, I would have thought. Put them both up there. She can peruse those later at her leisure. Uh, so, so just a quick recap. Tyvek, uh, it's used for many, many things. Uh, painters overalls, they use it in dress design. Um, when they're piecing out patterns, they use Tyvek for like lapels and structural work like that and then it's perfect for drawing round later to, to actually make a pattern so that you can sew up and um, the bands when you go to a rave they're made of Tyvek uh, house coverings are made of Tyvek uh, 
postal bags are made of Tyvek. It's just so many things. Um, and you can use it to strengthen the spines of your journals, or you can get all creative and have a go at distressing it uh, to create some lovely texture. Um, we have various pieces that we've done today, as you can see. That lovely bronze bit there that I like. A uh, bit I did earlier, which is brushed steel with some Krylon spider's web. More copper. The chicken. Uh, and then these smaller pieces that were made by shaping the Tyvek uh, before we distressed it. Uh, let's circle one there. Don't go there. There's the dark one I did earlier. Uh, there's the one there with the uh, beads on it. Uh, the triangle there. And there we go. There's a nice pile of inspiration. Inspiration in a pile. Uh, and I think that's probably about it. I don't think I can tell you much more. Um, I hope you have a go. Uh, there's some bits of Tyvek there look, that we've still got left that we'd cut the shapes out of. I'm just going to have to move these and do them now, aren't I? <gasps> if you see it, you've got to distress it. That's the it secret. Looks like, it looks like pirate's treasure. Pirate's treasure, indeed. Probably fairly disappointed pirates, I would think. You know, you're searching for gold and rubies and diamonds, and you get Mr. F's pile. Yes. I'm going to have a go at them because I can, and they're sitting there, and it'd be a shame not to, wouldn't it? So we'll get back to the trusty iron, we'll leave the naked flame alone, and we'll go. Go full time on it. Make, make it go quick. Go on, get shrunk. Don't be shy about shrinking. It's too late for any of that. Too late to be shy about these things. Gonna go and go and go. Let's see how small we can get it. See where we're at. Ooh, look at them. That bit there has become detached, as oh. you can see, it's melted through entirely. But what a lovely little bit that Except is. Looks like his foot that's dropped off. Oh no! It's, 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 a, it's another dinosaur, isn't it? Look, there's a tail. There's a head bending down. It's one of them velociraptors. That's what that is. Velociraptor. But he ain't so quick with one leg. Is an Opalong Velociraptor. But that's definitely what it looks like. That's the tail. That's definitely the back end of a Velociraptor. And there, that's that's the cave he lives in. That's all I can come up with that. Maybe if I put it that way up, maybe it's come something that'll spring to mind. It looks like a turtle, doesn't it? That's a turtle's head. You see it? That's its shell. There's turtle head sticking out. It is. Turtle head. It's a turtle. Not a snapping turtle, just a turtle. Not a turtle, alligator turtle, or anything fancy. It's just a turtle. <laughs> toy toys. Is a toy toys. You mean? Do you mean fancy? Fancy. Nothing fancy. Well, there we go. There's some other interesting shapes. Again, you could cut bits out, chop bits off, do whatever you want to do. You could paint them, dye them, carry on doing whatever you want to do. But anyway, I think that's me done for today. I hope you've enjoyed our little meander through the joys of distressing Tyvek. Uh, there's plenty more ideas out there, I'm sure. You can come up with with your own. Uh, it'd be interesting to see some of the things that you do. If you do, then join Miss paint -a -Lot's Junk Journal and Mini Album group on Facebook and post them on there. We'd all be more than happy to see them. Uh, if you have any questions, then please ask them. Ask them below this video or again join the group and we'll do our best to help. So I'll see you again. Ooh, I'm not sure when. Maybe I might pop up next week and do something else. Um, 
and we'll see that's it so take care be happy stay safe and i'll see you all again soon bye